Hello and welcome to Unit 4 of the course. This is the first of two units on bifurcations, sudden qualitative changes in the behavior of a dynamical system as a parameter is varied continuously. In this unit, we'll look at bifurcations in differential equations. The next unit will be on bifurcations in iterated functions like the logistic equation we studied in Unit 3. I'll begin this unit by reviewing qualitative solution techniques for differential equations. I'll then, I'll then introduce the uh, differential equation version of the logistic equation from the last unit, and I'll use this example to introduce the idea of bifurcations. So let's get started. So here is the logistic differential equation dp dt equals rp 1 minus p over k. It looks similar to the logistic equation from the previous unit. However, this is a differential equation. This is a dp dt on the left. So it means it will have somewhat different properties. I'll compare and contrast the differential equation and the iterated function in the next video. For now, I want to focus on the properties of this equation. So this equation has two parameters. R, as before, is a measure of the growth rate. The larger R is, the larger the population will be. P, here again I'm picturing as a um, population of some animal or something. And K is a parameter known as the carrying capacity. For the iterated function, the iterated logistic function, this was A and it was known as the annihilation parameter. And you'll see that K and A, although mathematically they appear in the same place, they have different meanings or do different things for this differential equation. So this is a differential equation like the ones we studied in unit two. dp dt, the rate of change of p, is a function of p. How fast the population grows depends on the current population and these two parameter values. Here's a plot of the right-hand side of this. And for concreteness, I chose what did I choose? I chose a K of 100 and an R I think was 3. So let me just make a quick note of that. Here K is 100 and R is 3. So from a graph like this, we saw in Unit 2 that we can get a lot of qualitative information about the behavior of this dynamical system. When this function is positive, that means the growth rate is positive and the population is increasing. So any population that's a little bit larger than zero or less than 100 will increase up to zero. If the population is larger than 100, the growth rate is negative, so the population decreases. If the population is less than zero, that doesn't really make any sense, but uh, mathematically, if the population were negative, the growth rate would be negative, so it would push that number to the left. So we can draw a phase line for this. So let me do that here. Here's the phase line. And we have two fixed points. One of the fixed points is at 0, and the other fixed point is at 100. And this fixed point is stable. Um, it's an attractor. Anything between 0 and 100 gets pulled towards it. Anything larger than 100 gets pulled towards it as well. Populations larger than 100 decrease until they reach 100. Populations between 0 and 100 increase until they reach 100. And then 0 would be an unstable fixed point, a repeller. If you're near 0 and you move a little bit to either side, you get pushed away. In this case, towards the attractor at 100. In this case, you would go towards negative infinity. So this is the phase line for this differential equation. We can also sketch solutions to the differential equation. And a solution in this context is the population as a function of time. So let's see, we know that 100 is a fixed point. And sorry, let me move that up. There we go. So we know that 100 is a fixed point. Let's see, I'll draw some solution curves in blue. If we start at around 20, 
we would increase. We would increase rapidly, keep increasing until we get to 100. If we started above 100, we would decrease and approach 100. So here are three different solutions. P as a function of time. That's what this blue curve is showing. This is P, this is T. And in all cases, they approach this fixed point at 100. Draw that sort of with a dashed line. So again, without doing any um, calculus or using Euler's method, we can get um, a, a reliable sense of the shape of these curves. So lastly, let me say a little bit about this quantity K, why it's known as carrying capacity. So, well, um, this, says, this equation says that any population, positive population, any real population you start off with, is going to go to 100. So 100 is, in a sense, the equilibrium population. It's the, the number of creatures that the system, whatever it is, can support. Um, okay, so this is a qualitative approach to solutions of the logistic equation. And um, after this is a quiz, just to kind of refresh your memory on how all this works. And then I'll discuss um, the logistic iterated function, and I'll compare and contrast the differential equation and the iterated function.